All right, so to end, I want to just mention a few rules of microbial diversity because almost everything that I've talked about so far in this lecture ultimately comes back to the ability of organisms to generate energy in ways that are quite amazing. And I would stipulate that microbes are by far the best chemists on the planet. And so if you're a chemist, pay attention because a lot of lessons can be learned from these guys. All right. Now when we're talking about the phase of active growth, the bottom line that microbes are facing is they simply want to divide. And to do this, they need two things. They need energy and they need carbon. And beyond that, they're virtually unconstrained, although there are a few constraints and we'll come back to that in, in a moment. They need substrates. And these substrates can be uh, organic or inorganic compounds. This is now for the part where they're going to be generating energy. Those substrates are converted to products through catabolic reactions, or energy generation, if you will. And oftentimes we think of energy generation in the form of ATP, the most important energy-carrying molecule within the cell. Now, this part of metabolism, catabolism, is coupled to anabolism, which is the part of metabolism that is concerned with energy consumption or biosynthesis. And now down here, what we're talking about is the conversion of carbon, often in the monomeric form, to biomolecules that are far more complex. So protein, DNA, lipid, for example. Now, if we're thinking just about the substrates, uh, as I said, they can come from a variety of sources. Um, always they're chemical, although light can help enable cells to actually utilize those chemicals in ways that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Um, but when we're talking about the growth of organisms just purely on uh, chemicals without needing a boost from light, the name we give to this metabolism is chemotrophy. And that in turn is classified into two different types, inorganic and organic. And when we're talking about inorganic sources of energy like hydrogen and sulfide and iron minerals, uh, this is called chemolithotrophy. And when we're talking about growing on organic substrates like glucose or glycerol or acetate, this is called chemoorganotrophy. And of course, as I said, while chemistry is always at the basis for any type of metabolism, uh, there is a photochemical boost that is often necessary when activating a compound that otherwise might not be biologically utilizable for energy, um, and that's when we call that process a phototrophic one. So the final part of this that I want to just mention is that the carbon source, which is distinct or can be distinct from the energy source, sometimes they're the same thing but they don't have to be the same thing, is either coming from inorganic carbon, CO2, or organic carbon. And when it's coming from inorganic carbon, that's called autotrophy. And when it's coming from organic carbon, that's called heterotrophy. So we're heterotrophs. We need to eat some type of organic carbon, whether we're vegetarians or meat eaters. Um, but microorganisms are far more sophisticated. They can eat minerals. They can just take CO2 from the air, uh, and, and they'll be on their way.